All right, everybody. We have uh, the start of my animation here. This is the collaborative animation. I took inspiration from this drawing. So this is my student drawing, and then I am recreating it over here uh, on the side. And I just decided to do it this way. So that way I have the reference right there for me. And eventually I will get rid of that reference. I set up my document, um, my screen as 1920. So I'll show you how I did that. So pixels, it's going to be 1920 by 1080 for height. 300 is the resolution. And then you'll just click create. So that's the size that I have right now. Right now, I'm not really worried about animating. I'm just focusing on creating the character. And then I'll also think about the scene. So based on your answers with your student, uh, with the kindergartner, you need to come up with scenery too. So what's going to be behind your creature? Now for the scenery part, you're allowed to use Pixabay. So let's say my student said they wanted a jungle background. So I'm just going to find a jungle. And you can create your own jungle too if you want to illustrate it. That's just fine. For mine, I'm just going to take a picture, I think. And you can use photos or illustrations. Either way, it's up to you. I think I'm going to do an illustration because I think that makes more sense. There we go. Maybe we'll just go here for now. The forest flying birds. Download. I'm going to download the larger size. It's even the right dimensions, which is great. It's like it's made for video. And then I'll just say file, place embedded here, find that image, I'm going to drag that layer below everything. Now while I'm building my creature, I think I'm going to turn that layer off just so I can focus on the creature. So when it comes time to actually designing the creature, you have to think about the skills you already know. If you take a look at the things I've already drawn here, so I've kind of interpreted the body as like not quite a circle, but it's kind of got those rounded edges. I use the pen tool for this. I also use the pen tool um, for this wing here. However, I do need to make some changes to that wing. I don't want a black outline around that, so I'm going to get rid of that right now. The cool thing with this project, too, is that a lot of times you can duplicate things. So when I made the eyes, I made one eye, and then I was able to duplicate a lot of that for the second eye. Okay, same thing with the wings. So I have my wing here. I'm just going to write this as this would be his right wing. And then I can say Control J on that. Duplicate. Now, since it's flipped, I can do Edit transform and then flip horizontal. So now I can just drag that down to where it needs to go. And this would now be left wing. So this is a way to kind of save time rather than having to redraw. Now, if you want to redraw or make adjustments to that, you still can. Um, for example, I can go in and let me grab my direct selection tool here. I could go in and even like adjust some of these points just to make it look a little different. Maybe you want to add a little variety. There we go. Just to give it a little something, something, make it a little different. Okay. All right, and just take it piece by piece. So you'll see I have all of my major components as separate layers. So these are the things that could possibly move in the animation. Um, everything that I'm not wanting to move, I could keep like together as one thing. So I'm just kind of building this as I go along. So I'll do the legs next. And I think the legs, I will probably do the line tool for that. So let's just do line here. Whoops. Thickness is okay. I might just go a little thicker. Let's zoom in a little. There we go. Once again, I'll just call this right leg. Do control J on the keyboard. Move that one over. And then this will be left leg. Now I think I'm going to combine my feet with my legs and the feet are just like these little circles. So I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool. I'm gonna to make a little black circle keeps popping up with my properties for some reason. I'm not sure why. And the other cool thing with this is you can actually sample the colors. So if I grab, let me put this back here. If I go this way and I grab that color. So let's say I want to copy that exact color right there. I can click on my little box, my color box. All right. And then it's going to give me my eyedropper. I can just sample that color, get that gray color, click OK. And now that will be the fill for my shoe or my foot. We'll turn off that stroke. 
here we go. So I'm even able to copy the colors. That's what I actually did for the whole body. I do need to make these wings a little bit lighter, I think. So this is going to be right, we'll just say right foot. We'll say control J, move that over and left foot. Now I said before, we probably want to combine the feet and the legs together. So this is where you're going to take a little bit of organization or it's going to take a little bit of organization. So we have our feet, we have our legs. Now left leg, I'm going to drag that next to left foot. And then these are already together. So all I have to do from here is I can just right click on left foot. And then I can, you may have to rasterize it. Actually, let's just rasterize all of these because that's not going to hurt anything. Rasterize, just right clicking, rasterizing. A lot easier to do it this way. Okay, so I have left foot. I'm going to right click on that. And then I'm going to say merge down. There it is. So now left leg and left foot are combined. So it's just basically, we'll just keep calling it left leg. Um, next one, I'm going to right click on right foot and then say merge down. It's so now right leg is combined. Okay, so that's how you combine those layers again, just in case you forgot. I'm going to change the colors of the wings here. So let's make it a little bit more of that lighter gray. I'm going to go back to my pen tool because I know I use the pen tool for that. I'm going to drag this over again so I can see my, my guy. We're going to get that lighter green. It's just slightly lighter. There we go. Nice. And then I can do the same thing for the left wing, and it should be saved in my recently used colors. Almost there. I think we're just missing a mouth. I think I got everything else. Missing a mouth. Okay. At this time, it's never a bad idea to do file save, just to make sure you got your work. And for the mouth, I'm going to put this at the top. We're going to do a new layer. For this one, I think I'm going to draw it um, with the, let's do the curvature pen tool and see that makes sense. I'm kind of struggling to understand what these pink things are. I'm not sure if they're tongues or maybe just the corners of the mouth. We'll see. That's where, you know, asking your kindergartners clarifying questions can be really useful to make sure you understand what they're trying to do. Okay. That's not quite what I was going for. So let's try that again. That's close enough. Okay. So instead of a fill, we're going to turn the fill off. I'm going to turn my stroke on. And this is going to be black. So I'm going to turn the color to black. And we're going to drop the thickness of that stroke. I don't need it that big. That's probably good. All right, now we're going to call this mouth. And then I need to figure out what those pink things are. Are they teeth? Are they tongue? They almost look like a tongue or something. Actually, it kind of looks like two teeth and maybe some blood. So <laughs> let's maybe zoom back out here. So let's maybe put some fangs in there, some kind of pink fangs. I don't know. All right, let's grab, let's do, you always have to think about, are you going to use the pen tool or the shape tool, you know, brush tool? What's going to make sense? I think the pen tool for this is going to be fine. I'm going to grab my regular pen tool for this. And I'm actually going to do a new layer for the fangs. Let's just try one fang here. So click and hold again. Ugh. I'm going to zoom in just so we can make sure we get everything. It's always easier to zoom in. Kind of curve back over. And then I'm going to make it zoom out here for a second. Let's see. That's not too bad. Click out of there. Okay. So color wise, let's make that pink. And let's sample that pink color so I can even match the color. There we go. It's almost like a salmon pink. Okay. And then it's got no stroke, which is what we want. Now, again, here I can go ahead and duplicate that. So I'm going to do control J. Duplicate. We're going to go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. And you can do that for vertical too, depending on what you're trying to do. That's probably good. Okay. And then I don't know if I'll put, I think I'll put the blood in. Why not? Let's put the blood in. <laughs> we got to, we got to maintain accuracy. Hopefully it's not too scary for the kindergartners. Depending on what your student asked for too. Maybe they want it to eat something or something. Okay. And the organization of your layers is important here because, you know, the mouth, like there's just the mouth. These are the teeth. So this is a uh, right tooth. This one we'll call left tooth. I think I'll actually combine some of this possibly. We'll see. But you can see I got a lot of layers here. Separating out your character is a really um, good way to start, though. 
Okay, so you have your background, you're separating out your character. We're almost there. Let me go ahead and I'm going to try and do some blood here on a new layer. And this I'm going, since it's more of an organic shape, I think I'm just going to use my brush for this. And let's choose a different color. Let's choose that color, but we're going to go darker. Like a blood, blood red. Okay, let's just see how this looks. <laughs> it's probably gonna look kind of scary. Mm. You just put a little bit of blood there. I think that's probably okay. We don't want it to be like dripping blood. <laughs> Almost looks like he's biting himself, but that's okay. You know what? I think I'm gonna scrap the blood, at least for now. Maybe I'll put it back in later. Okay. So I have my character all set up. Now it's all about putting it together. Now this is where combining layers and staying organized is a really good idea. So I'm gonna delete this layer actually. Let's just delete it for now. I'm gonna turn off my reference layer. Okay, we'll turn off that. I have my stage, so to speak, kind of set up already and my frame animation is all showing up there. You go to window timeline if you wanna find your animation timeline. Okay, and we can turn on the background. So from here, it's not a bad idea to group your layers. And what I mean by grouping is just grouping by type. So first off, what I like to do is I like to take all the layers I have. I'm going to unlock that. Somehow it got locked. I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard. I'm going to click on the last layer. And I'm, I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to say, uh, let's do new group. Let's just call it um, creature. Okay, there we go. We got our new group and we can drag these into, I should have done group from layers as my own fault. That's okay. All right, so creature. Now when I click this little drop down menu, it's gonna hide all of my layers. This is the whole creature. This is really good for staying organized. I'm gonna label this background so we can keep track of that. This is just my reference photo so I can keep it there. I can delete that. Let's delete that layer. Press delete on the keyboard. Okay. Now it's also not a bad idea to make a copy of your creature group. So once you have it all grouped together, um, you can actually duplicate the group. So we're going to say duplicate group. I'm just going to say creature copy. And then I'm going to turn that off and kind of keep it down here. It's just kind of like a backup copy in case any of my layers get messed up, make any mistakes. I always have extras to go back to. I can just drop down the menu again and find like, you know, my pupils and all that good stuff. I'm going to save that again. Okay, now depending on what your character is going to do, that's what's going to tell you what you need to animate. So in some instances, you might want all of your layers combined for a lot of this. And then maybe you just want, for example, maybe the wings to move up and down. If you're transforming in Photoshop um, it, and doing frame by frame animation, uh, you're going to have to make a layer for each one of those transformations. So if this wing is going to angle, if it's gonna rotate or resize, you will need to do a new layer for that. If it's just moving, then you don't. And I'll kind of show you what I mean here in just a minute. So let's create a frame animation here. I'm gonna do a really simple movement um, with the wing. So there's my first frame, let's do a second frame. And let's just go ahead and we'll just move our wings up a little bit. Okay, so you can see there it is. I'll do another layer and then maybe the wings are gonna move back down. So like it's just kind of gently flapping. It's gonna look kind of funny at first. Something like that, okay? So that's movement. If I'm trying to do transforming or tra you know, actually rotating or resizing, you're going to have to do a new layer. So I'll show you what I mean here. So let's take the left wing. We'll do control T to transform. I'll rotate it a little bit this way, hit enter. Now, unfortunately, it did that for all of them. See how it's rotated? It's rotated, it did still move, but it's rotated now. It's at that angle, it did it for all of them. It's not gonna just do it for that frame. So what that means is, this is where it gets a little complicated, you're going to have to duplicate that wing and you're going to have to make a wing that's like angled up. So what I like to do is I'll do control J, it's gonna be called left wing copy, and let's just call this left wing angled up. Okay, angled up. So this one will do control T. I'm gonna angle that up. You're gonna see the other one below it because I just have it turned on. Now I can go back through, I'm gonna turn off that angled up layer, make sure it's not there, and then we'll turn on the angled up layer there. So that's how you do 
can see it's kind of like bumping over. Uh, that's how you do transformations, like rotation or resizing. You could do that with resizing too. So if I go to this one and I want to make this wing look bigger for some reason, enter on the keyboard. Once again, you might have to go through and make sure. That's why it's good to build all your stuff first or as much as you can. Make sure it's all organized. But that's how you could have like eyes get big or things look like they're getting closer to the camera um, and, and kind of playing around that scale and also transforming like the mouth. So with the mouth, I have the mouth here. Let's say I want the mouth to open. So that means I'm going to have to probably do at least two layers where like the mouth is going to partially open and then open all the way. So let's do uh, let's actually duplicate this layer. We'll say control J. I'm going to turn off the old mouth layer. And then we have the regular one on. And then let's go in, and I might even just use the brush for this. Like, I think it was just black. And let's just draw directly on top here. So I could use the pen tool probably, but for now, for the purposes of this video, I think this is fine. So here's the mouth. We'll just call this partially open. So mouth partially open. Okay, and we're going to combine mouth copy with mouth, mouth partially open because you can see that line is still there. So we're going to right click on this and actually we'll have to rasterize this first. Let's rasterize. Right click on that, say merge down. Okay, so mouth partially open. Now I'm going to do control J again, duplicating the layer. We're going to make the mouth go all the way open now. Something like that. I could use the paint bucket maybe, but we'll just quick fill that in. So now I'm going to call this mouth open all the way. All right. So I'll show you how to do this quick. So let's grab that first layer. We're going to turn all of that off except for the mouth. Next layer, let's do mouth partially open. Next layer, let's do mouth open all the way. And I'll leave this one on for that. Let's see how that looks. So again, pretty basic here. It's not like the most beautiful animation yet, but you get the idea. Um, and next I'm going to show you how to move everything over. So let's say I want to move his entire body and everything over. I can show you how to do that. We'll just do another frame here. Okay. We're going to move the whole thing. It'll let us. Oops. Okay. We're going to Click on this top one, and then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the last one. Don't do the background, just, just the creature. That's why grouping it is a good idea. Now I can take my move tool and move the entire creature over. Let's just go like a little bit down. I could do another layer, move a little more that way, another layer. The more subtle the change, the smoother your animation is going to look, the better it's going to look generally. Now, at some point here, I want him to blink a little bit, but I'll add that later on. Once I know his placement and I'm happy with the placement and all this, let's go ahead and play it. So he kind of moves around. There we go. So that's how you get to move all the pieces. You don't have to go through each individual layer. Okay. That should be enough to get you started. As problems arise, because it's going to happen, you'll run into problems. Something will happen where you're going to need some help. Um, feel free to just call me over or just Google it. Chances are somebody else has also run into that problem. Um, sometimes I have to Google it. So there's nothing wrong with that. No shame at all. Just go ahead and look it up, see what you can do to fix it. And then if you need my help, I can always help. Um, but we're aiming for about 30 seconds or so, give or take, which right now, what, that's probably about three seconds, maybe, <laughs> I'd estimate. Not even, probably about two seconds. Um, so I definitely would have a lot more work to do. I got to figure out what else I can do, but that's the basics of frame by frame. I'll kind of talk about video timeline animation too, because we are going to see these as videos. Um, when we get into video timelines, you can also add um, music in as well. So you can actually add audio soundtracks, which I think is kind of cool. So um, you'll have the option or you will be required to add music and um, 
music and or sound effects. You can also record some audio if you would like some kind of dialogue in there. Um, just keep in mind that these animations are most likely going to be playing while the story is being read. So you don't want anything too jarring um, because we're going to be, you know, focusing on the story, but also watching the video as kind of like our visual. So this is just the visual that's going to accompany the story. And um, you don't want your audio to be so jarring that it like distracts everyone from the, the story. Okay. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, you are more than welcome to get started on this assignment.